Well, hello there, beautiful shrimp people. In today's video, guys, we are going to be revealing some new shrimp because, yeah, I had a spur of the moment buy in a store. I was literally walking with my puppy to get her fingernails clipped when I went past the tank and I saw these guys, right? And these guys are bamboo shrimp. These are the type that have the big fans like this that open backwards and forwards. And yeah, I've always wanted to get them. I actually saw these last year in the same store and I couldn't buy them at the time because they were under quarantine, right? So what we should do today is uh, open this package, get them in here. We can get some lovely little macro footage. I bought five of them. They're quite expensive to buy in Norway. They're roughly about $70 for five, which is meant to be a deal. But we'll put them in here and we'll add them to a tank, right? So I didn't specifically had, have a tank for them, but the only tank I have available for them is this a little tank up here, which you will see in a second, right? So let me pan this camera down, find my cup of coffee, because I can see it over there, and we'll unpack these and get them in there and have a look. All right, my awesome shrimp fam, hopefully you're looking at my hands. Uh, let's get these opened, because yeah, it is quite cold in Norway, so we should uh, get them acclimated as soon as possible. The place where I bought them was PayXL. You can see all the branding all over their paper that they wrapped our shrimp in. And yeah, it was, as I said, it was like minus 20 degrees Celsius outside. And yeah, so it was important that we got these home and acclimated as soon as possible. Oh, these are gorgeous big things. These are gorgeous, right? So I'm going to put them down for a second. And... Guys, I'm going to go behind the camera here and I'm going to lift the bag up to the camera on it just to see if you can actually see them a little bit better than what it would be if I'm trying to show you any other way. Because uh, it can be a little bit difficult to see with Mark's uh, Mr. Magoo eyebolics. But we'll try and get these shrimp into this bar uh, container here, this one here, and we'll have a look better with our macro camera. Right? So let's get them out of this bag first. Oh, so here is someone that knows what they're doing, look. This is a properly bagged bag. Let's see if I pull this knot. Bye-bye, uh, rubber band. It's always nice to see a practice where someone actually knows what they're doing with this kind of stuff. So let's uh, put them in here. I'm going to be gentle. Just take your time. Gently lower the bag in like this. And we're just going to simply turn it upside down, guys. And gravity shall set them free. I think. I'm going to try and do it slow so we don't stress them either. And guys, by the way, none of the water from these shrimp will be going into the container either. Because, yeah, when you buy from the bigger places, I am aware that they have a lot of shrimp and stuff and fish and whatever else that go through all of their tanks and their quarantine systems and whatever else. And, yeah, I'm, I'm just not going to risk putting this water into my tank. Let me see. We'll try and lift you up again. Just to see if you can see anything better. It is what it is. Yeah, they're, they're lovely looking, aren't they? Big, 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 big uh, bamboo shrimp. Let's uh, try and get them um, drip acclimated. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. You know what was interesting, guys, about the shrimp I just noticed there is uh, when the fans are not open like this, they're all kind of like this. And it looks like they're kind of praying which is pretty cool. I couldn't really get any decent macro shots of them simply because this uh, container is so scratched, but hopefully you can see something. Uh, once we get them into the tank, maybe tomorrow or something, I'll, I'll uh, try and get some better macro footage of them. But yeah, but let's get them over here and we'll actually start to drip acclimate them because yeah, they, we need to get this sorted. All right, beautiful shrimp fam, let's get these guys into their bucket for the drip acclimation. This is going to be a standard drip acclimation where we have the thing going into the tank. We have a length of cable with a little control valve. Let's get our shrimp in here. And I'm simply going to put them in really, really slow, guys. And uh, let's see, can I not turn this in here? No. Maybe I have to do it this way, look. We're actually going to have to pour them in really, really slowly because I can't actually fit that container in there. Let's see, can you see anything? This will be fine, we just have to pour them in a little bit slowly because these are quite big shrimp. There you go, come on, out you go. Out you go, see them all in the corner. There you go. And these guys will be fine, right? That water is kind of yellow as well. So they're all in our bucket. 
let's get these guys drip acclimated. So we do the standard drippage of probably two or three drips a second. And I'll, I'm, guys, I'm going to do this for a couple hours, I think. You know, what I'm actually going to check, guys, is the conductivity, or, or what you could say is the TDS would probably be better here. Yeah, let's do conductivity, because I have my conductivity pen here. Okay, so let's check out the water that is in there, which is very, very low, which is 364. So that suggests to me, I, I'm someone that lives in this area, that suggests to me that this is high but due to a lack of water changes. Let's check the actual tank. And it is 300, right? So 300 is what I set it to myself manually. 250, 300 is what I set it to. So, yeah, we're going to give these guys a little bit of time to acclimate themselves. Is this actually working? It is, but it's very slow. Let's speed that up a little bit. There you go, that's a wee bit better, you see? And this will do for probably, I don't know, three or four hours. And then, guys, because I could put them in faster, but why risk it? Why risk it? I'm not going to do it. Let's just wait, right, and we'll come back in a minute. I'll try and get some more macro footage for you as well. Let's uh, have a little quick look at the tank. Um, as I said, this tank isn't set up for bamboo shrimp, but it's going to have to do for them just now. This tank is about 50 litres, which is just over 10 gallons. Um, as you can see, we have some Pleco, Bristlenose Pleco caves in here. There is actually two Bristlenose in here, but they're very, very small. They're actually on the same little cave there at the back, you see them? This tank also has a few tangerine tigers in it. And, yeah, this is the other side. Has a lot of moss. Little cave. This is a bare bottom tank. And it has a sponge filter in the middle right on. It looks like a very boring setup, doesn't it, guys? But I think... Um, the way I wanted to do it with these bamboo shrimp is, is to try and have something within the flow and right now I just can't think of any idea to do that right so the only thing I can suggest guys right now is if you can see the flow that's in here if you can see all these bubbles and stuff up here right just outside the water is the flow you can see it here comes down right so the place in this tank guys with the most flow is actually on the sponge filters just the top of each sponge filter right and that's okay for me, so what I've done here is I've actually pulled both these sponge filters forward in the hope that once we put our bamboo shrimp in here that they will climb these themselves and sit on these bam on these uh, filters to feed. Right? So it's quite important with bamboo shrimp that you have a place for them to actually sit in a current current and a place where you're able to feed them. Right? So typically guys, what I'll feed these as well is our favourite crushed flakes. This will be a superb food for them. It just so happens to be a really good food for all their other little inhabitants in the tank. And yeah, let's uh, get these guys acclimated and then we'll put them in the tank. It has been roughly about an hour and we are going to start to remove some water from this bucket here because if you remove the water from the bucket as it's dripping in, what you do is the dilution process happens faster. And remember guys, we're not keeping any of this water. So um, the water that we remove from here we'll be going down the drain and then I'll be cleaning this stuff thoroughly afterwards so yeah, let's uh, give this a little stir so far our shrimp look are, are they're looking really good actually as in they're quite active moving around and yeah some of them are even going walking around opening the fans already so that is a really good sign let's get rid of a good amount of water here as much as we can while still keeping it quite comfortable for the shrimp and then um, after guys what will happen is we'll leave them probably about another hour and we'll come back and we'll measure the parameters of the water again to see if it's close close enough for us to actually put them in the tank or not right right guys so our shrimp are ready to go in here they are here they're looking lovely jubbly and very healthy right so we're going to put them in the water I dripped these for two hours until the conductivity matched, right? So in the tank it was 309 conductivity and, and um, in their container it was, I think it was like 312, right? So it was a slight difference. It's very, very small when you're talking about conductivity, right? So the water 
is good to go. All the water that we took out is uh, going down the drain. So this is even good water from the tank itself. No water from where they came from goes into the tank. So you stop cross contamination, whatever else. And yeah, let's guys, let's get these guys in here. Boy, this is probably the first time I've had a really good look at them. So it's worth looking now to see if there's any Scutellaria japonica on them. Which I cannot see, which is always a good sign. These guys have been dripped long enough. So yeah, let's get them in here. Let's get them in there, here to their new homes. And guys, just remember, this is going to be a temporary setup for these guys. Because I'm aware that these can grow quite large as well. About five, six centimetres, something like that. And ideally... I'd like to do a tank specifically for them. There's the first one. Come on, you go. Come on, stop hanging on for dear life. There's the life. <laughs> Guys, they're absolutely gorgeous. They are absolutely gorgeous. Let me get some macro footage and uh, we'll talk a little bit more. There's the first one. Big, big, gorgeous shrimp. You can see the fans at the front. These fully open up when the shrimp starts to feed. On this section here, guys, I'm not sure right there at the end of my finger. That might looks like it might be a little bit of rust, which uh, can be cured with clean water and H2O2. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. There's a little bristlenose pleco at the back. I'm trying to come in and see what it's up to. Let's see, can we get a picture of some of these other ones at the back? It's one of the other ones. These shrimp are gorgeous. I'm fully expecting these guys to hide for at least a day before they come out and sit up on top of this filter and uh, start to feed away. But aren't they gorgeous guys? Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Look at it go. And what I did notice guys when I was doing this is that they are um, very clingy when you are trying to net them and stuff. They cling to stuff like you wouldn't believe. So this shows you what the habitat is, probably most likely like where they come from, which would be a fast to moderate flowing stream, I'd imagine. Let's see, can I zoom in a little bit further? Is it going to a focus? That's such a gorgeous looking animal. It's almost green, I think this one. It's almost green. I think the other couple have uh, hid already. Oh, we're down the back. And yeah, guys, I have a lot to learn with these guys. I don't think I've ever had bamboo shrimp, so it'll be a learning curve for me to see what is the best circumstances and tank conditions and whatever else for them as well. But I can already tell that these are going to acclimate really, really well. I can see this one's already starting to fan a little bit. See, see its little feelers? It's already starting to fan. Look at that. So we just put it in, not even two minutes gone, and this one's starting to fan already. What a magnificent looking animal. You can see in the top of the car pass, what you would call behind the neck there, this also looks like it might have a tiny bit of rust. I'm not sure. I'll have to keep an eye on that as well. Let me see. Can I see any of the other ones? I cannot. I cannot see them. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you see the membership, thing pop up now please consider becoming a member because it helps me fund my shrimp frame and yeah below my face here below the shrimp's face I should say on the right hand side there should be a little box that says watch more if you want to watch another one then do and uh, yeah I'll see you in the next one happy shrimp keeping guys